But God wants us to be able to come and trust him. And because of the relationship that David had with his God, he could know and trust and believe God that he could put everything in him, all that he was, all that he wanted to be, his entire life, his entire kingdom could rest in the palm of God's hand because of the relationship that he had. I can't say that enough. We have to have relationship with God. It's not enough just to know that there's a God out there. It's not, enough to know that Je- it's not enough to have to know that Jesus died on the cross. We have to know more than that. Do you believe that this morning? We have to know more than that. We have to know that he died and that I can talk to him and that I can say, Jesus, thank you for dying for my sin, but God, I've got to give this to you now because I don't want to be the same way. See, he died for us so that we could have life and we can move in that life and do all that he's called us to be. So he said, look, if I had not known him, I would have lost heart. And he said, but that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In verse 14, he said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Encourage yourself in God's promises. Encourage yourself in God's promises. There's so many. How many of you guys read the word of God and think that really, is, it looks good, sounds good. Thank you that I could read this, Lord. And thank you for giving me your word. But we just sometimes, we just don't believe it's for us. How many of you guys are honest and would say you can believe something in the word of God for somebody else, but you can't believe it for yourself? I find myself in that predicament all the time, and I talk to Renee, my wife, and she says that all the time. You know, I can can believe God that, man, he can move mountains, he can save, he can deliver, he can do everything. But when it comes down to my life, I struggle the most thinking that God truly wants this for my life. He wants this for me. And God really does want this for you. He says, so encourage yourself. Trust in the Father of lights. Don't stop believing that God truly wants us to do Great and mighty things in his name. See, there's a city out here, guys. Journey Church and the life-giving churches of this area, it's great that we can come and celebrate and have a great time in God's house. We come and get uh, touched and we can thank God for all the great things that are happening. But do you know that this is not it? We have not arrived. See, the reason that we don't stop believing and we keep pressing into the Father of lights is because you and I have to go out and we have to make a difference. We have to understand that the light that Jesus Christ has put inside of our hearts through him dying on the cross and us coming into fellowship with him, it's that light that goes out and makes a difference. Are we willing to take a step of faith Are we willing to say, God, whatever it takes, in this time, this generation, guys, the time is short. We've got to be about God's business. I believe that. So in closing today, these are the three things that I just want you to just to be able to take home with you, to write these things down, to to write them on your heart, to to make sure that in Psalm 27, if you said, Brian, I know Psalm 27. Now, these are the three things that I want you to know. Encourage yourself in God and in his promises. It's okay to know God's promises and to encourage yourself when you're down, when you don't know that you can take another step, when you're down and you don't know that you can live another day and you're just beat up because there's so many things going on in your life. Trust in God and believe in his promises and read the word to yourself. Be encouraged by God and move in his word and be encouraging to one another. The second thing is this. If you find yourself down and out, cry out to God. Remember David. Remember King David, that he wasn't afraid to cry out, that there was no shame in crying out. Don't you think the God that created you wants to hear from you? Don't you know that he already knows your issues? He already knows your problems. He already knows your circumstances. And he's wanting you to cry out so he can deliver you, so you can give him praise. I believe that. Deliver you so you can give him praise. And the third thing is this. Trust in the Father of lights. Trust him. And you can trust him when you're in relationship with him, when you're praying with him, when you're moving with him, when you're talking with him in the car, when you're talking with him at night, when you're praying with your kids, laying them down in bed. That is the relationship that I desire even more and more and more every day. And that should be the place where we find ourselves as believers sitting in this room. God, I will trust you. I will put my faith in you. I will encourage 
Be encouraged in your promises. And Lord, I will trust in the Father of lights. I won't stop believing in who you are. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. And Father, we just thank you for your word today, God. There's so many here that are here because, Lord, you've called them into right relationship with you. And God, they're just living out their life. They're, they're here today, God, to worship you, to lift their hands up, God, to give you their very best. But Father, right now in Jesus' name, if there be anybody here that does not know you as Savior, that does not know you as Lord, God, right now, I pray that you would just begin speaking to that heart. I believe that there are many in this room that maybe say, you know, I know this God. I've heard of him. I know this Jesus. I have heard of him. I've seen him on TV. I've seen him all over. And maybe you've had the, the wrong representation of Jesus. But can I tell you today that there is a personal God that wants to know you. He wants to know you. He wants to know your heart. He already knows who you are. He already knows every thought in your mind. He already knows every thought that you have. But he wants to be in relationship with you. And today, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus, while everyone is being quiet in the solemn moment, just slip your hand so I can pray with you today. Is there anyone here that would say, I, I need to be in right relationship with Jesus? Is there anyone here I'm looking Maybe say, Brian, I, I, I know this Jesus. In fact, I've walked with him for many years, but I do not walk with him today. I'm not in right relationship with him. I have gone away. I've gone astray, and I need you to pray for me right now. I need to know that I'm in the hands of a living God and that he loves me and that he would just forgive me. Is that you today? Would you just lift your hand? I see that hand. Is there anybody else? I see that hand. I see that hand. Is there anyone else? Say, I, need, I just need to be in right standing with God today. Will you stand with me this morning? There are many hands that have gone up for many different reasons in this place. And this is what I want to do. I just want to stay in an attitude of prayer. And I just want everybody, if you could, just in your hearts, just begin praying and just saying, Lord, I, I want to be who you've called me to be. Lord, I want to be able to walk out my faith and do all that you've called me to be, God. Father, we thank you and we trust in you, the Father of lights, that you can do amazing things. But Lord, we want to be trusting in you. Father, I pray for those who raise their hands right now that would say, I'm not in right relationship with you. Just call upon the name of the Lord and say, God, Father, forgive me. I repent of my sin. I want to be in right standing with you today. Touch me. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. I want to... I just want to move forward today. From this day forward, I want to live my life in all that you do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you're doing right now in this place. Thank you, God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. While you stay, remain standing, I just want to do something real quick. You should have received one of these when you first came in this morning. This is a new My Journey card. And on the back there, is, it says at the very top, My Next Steps. And if you feel the Lord really tugging at your heart this morning to, to take the next step in faith. You know, some of you guys may have walked with the Lord for many, many years, but maybe you've sat idle for a couple of years and you're just, you're parked on the pine. It's time to step out in faith, guys. It's time to take it to the next level and reach a city for the name of Jesus. And if that's you, just take, take a look at this. There's many different things. Commit my life to Christ today. I want to commit my life. Just check that box. You want to memorize the current series verse, uh, life verse for this series. Maybe today you want to accept the one-year uh, one Bible challenge. If you're not studying every day and you're not in your word every day, maybe the one-year Bible is for you because it walks you through. You'll read the Bible in an entire year. And I'm telling you, the word changes your life. That's what it does. It's the word that changes your life. It's your worship that changes your life. And worship in the word changes your life. Maybe it's to volunteer to serve in a ministry. There are many opportunities here. Pastor Eric spoke about them earlier. 
But whatever that next step is, I just want to encourage everyone to fill this out before you leave. Drop it in one of the ushers. Drop it in at the door on the way out. But take the next step today. It's not enough. You know, we should be filling out one of these every single week because if we're staying idle, we're not growing in our faith. Amen? We've got to grow in our faith. So let me just say a blessing over you as you're going out through your day. Just remember, youth come out on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. We just appreciate everybody being here. Let me just pray over you. Father, we just ask a special blessing over this congregation this morning. God, they have come. They've lifted their voices to you. They've lifted their hands to you. And Father, I pray that right now as they go from this place, that you would bless them in everything that they do. God, bury your word deep within our hearts, Lord. Father, thank you for the revelations that you gave King David to trust in you, God, to make you Lord of his life. And so, Father, today in declaration, we cry out to you and say, Lord, be Lord of our life today. Move in us in a new way, God, so that we can touch this generation. We want a people that are hungry and thirsty and, and hungry for the things of God. So Lord, I pray that you would do that in this place and in through each person that is here today. And God, as we leave this place, help us to love you more, to love God, to love others and serve the world and everything that we do in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Make sure you tell somebody to come. Grab somebody to come back with you next week. Love God, love others, serve the world. We will see you next Sunday here.